Hello, hello. Welcome to yaymath.org. My name is Robert Adut, and this series is called Yay Math in Studio, surrounded by this beautiful studio space with hands holding hands and my friend Zach behind the camera. Um, this concept, proof by mathematical induction, really tends to shut a lot of students down, but I'm gonna walk you through this process so that it doesn't have to be that way anymore. It's gonna make sense. We just have to understand the intention of what proving by mathematical induction is. The idea behind mathematical induction, if we're trying to prove this statement true, is that if you assume that the next item in some sort of list is true, then that must mean that the entire thing is true. Here's what I mean. They're saying, prove that one cube plus two cube plus three cube all the way, and it's just up to some value, let's say eight or nine or 10, right? Whatever this N is. And if you're adding all these up, it would be the same as that same value N, let's say it was 10, for example. So if you're doing like one cube plus three cube, two cube plus three cube, plus four cube plus five cubed, all the way up to 10 cubed would be the same, adding all those up would be the same as 10 squared, times 10 plus one squared over four. It's kind of interesting that someone made that um, realization. So we need to prove this by saying that not only would this be true, but it would be true for the next value of n, or like 11. I'll show you what I mean, okay? Step one. First, we have to prove it's true for if n is just equal to one. We have to prove it true on a, like a baseline scenario. So is it true for n equals one? That would mean on this side would be just one cubed, should equal over here, one squared, one plus one squared over four. And this is one times two squared over four. That equals four over four, which is one. So it's true. And over here it's one. So that's one equals one. So that's true. So it works for when n equals one, okay? So the next step, which is the real meat of the thing, is to make sure it works not only for n, but for the next value. That's what induction, it's like going to the next term, okay? So instead of n, we're gonna call it k, so that we're being clear. So now let's think of it like, what if it was one cube plus two cube plus three cube plus all the way plus to k cubed plus, on this side, you would think the next one would be k plus one cubed, okay? That's like the next one should be the same as k cubed, or excuse me, k squared, the original, k plus one squared over four, right? Plus the same thing on both sides, k plus one cubed, all right? So that's the idea. It's like if we added the next value of n, one after n would be n plus one. So instead we're just calling it k's now. So this is k, this is the next item for k. And then this is the next item. This is the original one right here. And we added k plus one cubed to both sides. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus in on this and see if we can simplify it. All right, so I'll bring it over here, this thing. So that's k squared, k plus one squared over four plus k plus one cubed, okay? So let's simplify this. We're gonna combine them and see what happens, see what floats. We're adding fractions here. So we're gonna create a common denominator. This is four over four. And so now we can merge this all into one fraction. This becomes k squared k plus one squared plus four k plus one cubed all over four. We notice that there is a uh, common denominator here of k plus one squared, not common denominator, excuse me, common factor. There's a common factor of k plus one squared here and k plus one squared hiding in here. So I'm gonna bring that out. So this is k plus one squared comes out. Move this four a little higher. And so let's see what's hiding inside. If we bring out a k plus one squared, what's resulting in here is k squared plus, if we bring out two k plus ones, 
We're left with one of them, so that's 4 times k plus 1. This is all over 4. All right, we're going to combine like terms inside there, multiply through. This is k plus 1 squared times k squared plus 4k plus 4. This marker's had it. Taxing it, baby. Yeah, much better. This is all over 4. Okay. And now you'll see that this thing factors. So we're going to factor that. Bring that over here. So that was k plus 1 squared times k plus 2 squared all over 4. And now analyze with me. Notice how this thing is the same thing as this, but each n is one higher. You see that? Each n is one higher. It used to be n squared, n plus 1 squared, all over 4. So if you ended at n, you would have n squared and n plus 1 over 4. If you ended at 1 more than k, let's say, if you ended at k plus 1 at the next one, you would agree that this would have to be 1 higher and this would have to be 1 higher, and it is. All right? So it used to be this, ending at n, now we're ending at k plus 1. So each item in here is 1 higher. 1 higher here, 1 higher here. So it's proved true by mathematical induction, okay? Because we ended on one higher, this, both of these terms would be subsequently one higher, okay? Let's do it one more time. And that's all we're going to do today. Okay, so we're going to pr first prove this statement, true for n equals 1. It should work for n equals 1. Let's get that done. So if n equals 1, the left side would just start there and end there, so that's 1 squared should equal 1 times 1 plus 1 times 2 times 1 plus 1 all over 6. Is it true? This is 1 squared is 1. This is 1 times 2. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3 all over 6. This is 6 over 6. It's true. So it is true for n equals 1. Here we go. Let's prove it now for k values. Okay, here it comes. 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus da 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 plus k squared plus the next value of k, the one in front of it, so we're sort of inducing the next k value is k plus 1 squared, would end on k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 all over 6, and then we add the same thing to both sides. So again, these are all the same values, right? Everything in black was imported from the previous one, and the only thing changed was n to k. So everything in the black is the same. I just turned it to k's, so I'm allowed to add another k value here. So this is plus k plus 1 squared, all right? And then we analyze this to see what happens, okay? Let's do the same thing we did before. We could start working on it right now. We're going to combine like terms here, adding fractions. We need a common denominator. We'll call this 6 over 6. And so we can bring this all into one house. So this equals k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 all over plus 6k plus 1 squared over 6. Look closely, we have a common factor of k plus 1. We're going to bring that out. So that's k plus 1 comes out, leaving inside a k and a 2k plus 1. Plus, we took out one of the k plus 1s, so that leaves 6 times k plus 1. Close. All over 6. Inside, we're going to combine like terms. Here we go. Bring it down. 
k plus 1. Inside we have 2k squared plus k plus 6k plus 6. All right, close. Good. All over 6. Combine like terms. We'll get, let's bring it over here, k plus 1. So we got 2k squared plus 7k plus 6. All over 6. Back over here. This factors. K plus 1. We're almost there. So this is 2K and K. All right, so we need to multiply to make 6 back here and add to make 7 through FOIL. So I'm thinking like 3 and 2, maybe. So I could put like a 2 here. And a 3 here, that multiplies to 6. Yeah, when you add them up, that'll be 2k squared, 4k and 3k. Again, 4k and 3k will be 7k. And then you'll get the 6. So this is all over 6. We compare to the original. Yep, there it is. Wow. Now, is this the same as this? but every number for n1 higher. I'm gonna reorder, you'll see why. This is, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna move all this work, because the work is old news. Take all this out. All right, bring this over here, I'm gonna reorder it. So this is now k plus one. I'm gonna bring k plus two next, Put that there. 2k plus 3, all over 6, compared to the original one, which was n, n plus 1, maybe you're starting to see it, and 2n, 2n plus 1, all over 6. So if you ended with n, these would all be n, n, and n, but if you ended with k plus 1, then each of these would have to be 1 higher than k. And it is one higher. This is one higher. See that? If you add one to this, you'll get there. If you add one to this, you'll get there. Now, if you add one to this, that would be two times n plus one plus one. See that? I added, let's just k. Let's put a k there. Two times the next value for k. That's two k plus two plus one, which is two k plus three there. That is two. So because we ended on one higher value of k, this process doesn't end on just the n. It ends on one more than k, one more. It doesn't end on k, it ends on k plus 1. It doesn't end on n plus 1, it'd be one more than that, there. It doesn't end on this, it's when, if k is one more than its original value, then that would be one more over here. So this is now proven true by mathematical induction. All right. Kind of a beast of a process, but if you understand the main idea is inducing, you know, moving on to the next value in the proof, it's like not ending on k squared, but k plus one squared, and then adding that same value to over here. Once you combine everything over here, it's the same thing as ending on this, but everything one higher. And that proves it true by going to the next item in the list. All right, sounds good. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you liked it. Email me, robert at yamath.org. Love having you. Take care.